past weekend, Denny Villeneuve's Dune Part 2 dropped in theaters, and it is killing it with critics, audiences, and at the box office. But Villeneuve's Dune is not the first adaptation of Dune. It's not even the second adaptation. So today we're gonna stop and rank each of the Dune adaptations from the worst to the best. My name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your ranking of each of the adaptations of Dune. My list is not the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. As we go into this, I haven't read the book Dune. Therefore, as I'm ranking these, it's not based off faithfulness or accuracy. It's based off of how well do I think they work in and of themselves. One more thing before we get started, today's video is brought to you by Hamilton Watches. They have a brand new Dune-inspired Hamilton Ventura XXL Bright Dune Limited Edition. More on them later, let's get started. In last, David Lynch's Dune. Now, this is a movie that they've been trying to make for basically a decade by the time this version of the film came out. There are multiple high-profile versions that fell through in the 70s. Most infamously, famously, Jordorowski's version of it that he worked on for years. And it kept getting bigger and more elaborate. And in fact, a whole documentary about his failed version of Dune came out about 10 years ago. And then some of the artwork that he was working on for it ended up inspiring some of the work that Ridley Scott used for Alien. Then Ridley Scott was signed on for seven months to do Dune. And he worked on it, and at some point in time, he just decided it wasn't right for him, and he moved on and did Blade Runner instead, which is kind of an interesting little irony of history, given that Villeneuve has gone on to do Dune as well as Blade Runner 2049. And all of that led to the eventual film that David Lynch released. As a point of reference, I did not grow up watching this film. I don't have a history with it. I watched it for the first time after watching Dune 2021, and I found it to be a very confusing mess of a film that felt like it was basically montaging through a dense piece of work. And to some extent, that kind of is what's happening. Dune has historically had that reputation for being virtually impossible to translate into film. I would argue that Villeneuve has done a great job with it, but... When you try and convert such a dense book into a movie that's under two and a half hours long, inherently, you're just trying to like like fly through so many plot points so quickly that nothing is elaborated on, nothing is explained. And in particular, when you have so many factions with weird names, it's very difficult to follow. And once again, I haven't read the book, so having seen Dune Part 1 and then watching this, when it got into the back half of this version of the film, I didn't really even know what was going on because it was moving so fast through Paul's rise in fame and leadership. It's not able to elaborate on the prophecies or what's going on with the different factions. And so on a story level, I just don't think it really worked at, at all. Now, supposedly there's some version, the original version was like over three hours long, maybe close to four hours long. And if David Lynch was able to finish that, maybe it would work and maybe it would be interesting. But in this two hour and 15 minute version that I've seen, I don't think the story works. Now, from there, you also have to talk about the production design, the visual effects and some of the world building that did, did, they did there. And I think it's kind of a mixed bag with this film. There's some visuals that look awesome. There's some shots that just have such like depth to them of what they were able to accomplish 40 years ago. It's really incredible. And then there's parts to it where they decided to adapt some stuff that was just so weird that like when you're doing the Space Guild Navigator with 40 year old visual effects and you can't really even explain what's going on it's just trippy and weird. I didn't know what I was watching when some of this stuff happened. Likewise, the way that they visualized the shields, 
I, I just don't think it worked at all. I understand limitations of technology, but when you have this blur block covering every knife fight and there's a lot of knife fights, you can't see the choreography. You can't see the action. So it, it doesn't work. I can understand how for, for people that kind of have been watching this a long time, or if you just like weird trippy Lynch stuff that you might be really into this film and this version of Dune as someone that's relatively new to it and watched it after seeing Villeneuve's first Dune film, I just don't think it worked. I don't think it was a good adaptation. They did the best they could at the time with the resources that they had, but it just did not come together for me at all. And third, Dune the miniseries on sci-fi. As a point of reference, I am aware that they did a sequel series, Children of Dune, a few years later. I chose not to include that in this ranking because I honestly, I didn't want to be introduced to that story via the miniseries. I'd rather either read the books or wait until the eventual films that come out since Dune Part 2 is killing it and we're almost certainly going to get some of that. This was a sci-fi miniseries from the year 2000 and it very much so looks like a sci-fi miniseries from the year 2000. And how watchable you find this version of Dune probably depends greatly on how much syndicated sci-fi and sci-fi network science fiction you watched right around the turn of the century. I watched a lot of that syndicated sci-fi stuff. Therefore, watching this type of production actually gives me a lot of nostalgia for a specific way of trying to do these big stories in other worlds with very limited resources. So what I think worked really well for the miniseries is of all the versions of Dune that I've seen, I think this one best captures the passing of time. I adore the Villeneuve films. We'll get there in just a second. But I don't think they're the best at showing the passage of time and kind of feeling it happen. And the miniseries, even because of the nature of just being a miniseries, has a little bit more time to help you feel the time. And even some little details that I'm, I'm, I'm guessing are from the book that Villeneuve decided to not include, but like with children coming into the picture and the way relationships are established, you feel feel the epic build and growing life that Paul has with the Fremen. And, and it just has a different vibe to it when you can have it breathe and have that passage of time. Likewise, there's just a few more little subplots and intricacies of Paul's ascension that just add a couple more layers to the depth. Now, of course, uh, this is a sci-fi miniseries from the year 2000, which means <laughs> CGI at the time was nowhere close to where it's at now. And even the green screen, it just, just looks bad. As I've said, and we'll continue to say about Villeneuve's films, there's not a false frame in them. It's almost the exact opposite here, that there's not a, a believable frame here. They're doing the best they can with the resources at their disposal, but it just has a specific clean TV show from that time period vibe to it. And even where some of the stuff in Dune 1984, I didn't think always looked great or there were limitations. There was an artistic bent to Dune 84, whereas I feel like with the miniseries, it's much more just kind of a, a generic by the numbers adaptation. And, you know, when you're trying to tell an epic story that has epic battles and you simply don't have any resources to do anything that's actually epic, it, it holds back your storytelling. I, I think some of the performances in here are really weak. Paul is not compelling. Some of that's the performer. Like he just doesn't have anything that like draws your attention. None of that on-screen presence or charisma. It has all the beats. It has all the notes. And I feel that's what I have to put it ahead of Dune 1984 because Dune 1984 just doesn't work on a story level. This one has the story, but it, it simply doesn't have the resources to, to, to really pull it off. It was interesting to check it out, to see what 
a storyteller tried to do with what they had at their disposal oh so many years back. Our runner up, Dune 2021. Obviously, Dune 2021 is part one of Villeneuve's two-part adaptation of the book. I find part two to be a little bit better. Both of them are great, and part one was made better by part two, and part two wouldn't be as awesome as it is if part one hadn't laid the foundation. And that's so much of what this movie does so well, was just building out this believable world where it's able to introduce us to all these different groups, all these different characters, and help us understand how they're different, their different competing value sets, and all the ways that there's characters that we want to like, but we can't really trust, how family dynamics aren't the way that we normally even think about family dynamics, and just builds this interconnected web of different groups, different motivations, and how this thing is going to go really bad with how much conniving, how much stuff is going on. You just have this impending sense of badness. Doom is on the horizon. And it makes the characters feel real, believable, complex, and layered all throughout its runtime. Other thing about these movies you got to talk about is their absolutely flawless <laughs> productions where... No, there's not a single false frame in these movies, which is so impressive when you have gigantic sandworms and people surfing on sandworms and spaceships and helicopter type things with dragonfly wings and everything feels like it exists in reality. And so much of that is because Villeneuve and his team did the hard work of just doing the research to figuring out what would it take for this thing to be real? What would a real throat to one of these sandworms look like? And they, they did the research and they ended up using the design of a beatboxer's throat as the throat of the sandworm. So even as you're seeing this fantastical thing that doesn't exist in reality, they based the fake thing on something real. When trying to figure out how would a sandworm move in the sand, they did all the hard work to research sand and figure out how it works and what would this look like and built practical sets that were augmented with CGI. There's tons of CGI in here, but it's all based on something anchored in reality. And so whether the choices of the characters, the world that is being built out about the, all these different groups and how they behave, the tech that they're, use, tech that they're using, and the ways that all of this is visualized, it all feels real and you buy into it and you believe it. So you're just sucked into this world. Everything was crafted to be believable down to the finest details in each of Villeneuve's Dune films. And that'll bring us to today's sponsor, Hamilton Watch. Hamilton is the watchmaker of filmmakers. Since 1932, their watches have been featured in over 500 films. They've provided watches for films such as Indiana Jones, Men in Black, Pearl Harbor, and Oppenheimer. They've also designed watches specifically for an individual film. They did this for the first time back in 1968 when Stanley Kubrick asked them to design a specific futuristic watch for 2001 A Space Odyssey. At Villeneuve's request, Hamilton worked alongside prop master Doug Harlocker to design a watch specifically for Dune Part 2 for the Fremen. Guided by the lore of Frank Herbert's Dune and Villeneuve's vision for the film, Hamilton's designers created a distinctly Fremen device that perfectly embodied Harlocker's artistry and earned Villeneuve's blessing on the final design. While the Desert Watch is exclusive to Arrakis in the film, they've put out two different limited edition watches which are inspired by the design. The Ventura Bright includes a button replicating the glowing blue lines of the Desert Watch dial design. The limited edition piece comes with the commemorative packaging inspired by the film that fans of the movies and books and collectors will enjoy. If you're interested in getting your own Hamilton Ventura Bright Dune limited edition watch, head to HamiltonWatch.com. The link is down below in the description and this is by far the coolest watch that I have ever had 
and let's get back to it. But coming in at number one, Dune Part Two. Since Dune 2021 laid the foundation, built out all the world, dropped all the exposition, introduced us to most of the characters, and laid out all of our different factions and their different motivations, that meant Dune Part Two just got to build on top of it and tell this complex, layered and compelling story where nothing is quite as simple as it seems. At face value, it's a classic hero's journey about the chosen one who rises to this position of leadership to lead the resistance against the tyrants. But it's never quite that simple when it comes to Dune, whereas all the things I just said are true of the story, but because it's layered, everything has more depth to it. There's always more going on than what's at face value, in particular with this prophecy, where it's part of the manipulations of this group over here who are trying to gain power in their own way. And it makes everything more interesting because everything has multiple interpretations. Everything elicits multiple emotions out of you. Everything you have to pause and stop and think about all the good and the bad that comes out of it because it never goes for the safe or easy, easy route. It's always challenging the audience, subverting expectations in the right way, where it delivers the tropes of the genre, the beats of the genre that you want, but it does it in a way that's smarter than the audience. So you have Paul have all of these great victories where the emotions swell, where he accomplishes great things and tears down people that are worse than he is at the moment. But at the same time, we know when he's leaning into his worst tendencies. We know when he's using the prophecy to start manipulating to start manipulating people around him. We can see him compromising his values, turning from what he knows is right. And in the one sense, he's doing a good thing. But in another sense, we know that he's acting out of his more base impulses. We know he knows how bad all of this can go. And that just makes for such a more satisfying and fulfilling experience when it's not all just face value surface level. Beyond that, as I said before, it's an immaculate production. There's not a false frame in the entire movie. Everything looks incredible. And whether you're talking about massive battles that are just just awe-inducing in an era where everybody's trying to out-epic everyone else, this is the movie that out-epicked everybody else. But then you also have people surfing on worms in the sand and you buy into it. And it's done in such a way that it's it's a character moment and the music swells and you have so many different emotions and you believe it. And that's what makes Villeneuve's production here so incredible that he's able to take you off into this world and build it out with so much detail that you just want to learn about every character. You want to dive into every detail and just immerse yourself in this world and spend time in all of it, unpacking it, being challenged by it, being thrilled by all of it. That's when you've done something special, and that's what Villeneuve has done with his pair of Dune films. So it comes in at number one. Let me know your ranking of the Dune films down below in the comment section. Give me that point of reference. Are you someone that's only watched the movies, or are you someone that has read the books? Also, if you're a Dune fan and want an awesome Dune-inspired watch, go to HamiltonWatch.com. Thank you so much for watching, and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.